John. Hey, baby. Hey, babe. How you doing? I didn't hear the chirp from the alarm go off when you came in. Gosh, you scared me. I'm sorry. I <laughs> got a new hair, though. I like oh, it. Do you like it? Yeah, it's nice. Oh, baby, thank you. <laughs> John, you have been gone for four days. Uh, I've missed you. I know. And I'll miss you, too, baby. Come on, let's sit down. Let's have some us time. All right, let me see. About tonight. Why don't you call your brother up and see if he come out and hang out with us tonight? No, he's already gone back home to San Jose, honey. Ah, well, what about your niece and the kids? Tell them to come over for dinner. Let's have dinner with them. She's actually having dinner over her house, and she's inviting some folks over. Uh -huh. She asked if we stop by. Okay. Listen, John, not to change the subject or anything, mm -hmm. but I want you home more often. And what I really like is for us to get our date nights back, okay? All right. Okay? Yeah, baby. What? <laughs> I'm surprised you're not going to put up a fuss? Nope. You deserve it, sweetie. Wow. Okay, baby. Listen, John. I'm not going to put up an argument, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're gone for days at a time. And I don't know where you are or who you're with. And you know you have been unfaithful in the past. And you've told me time listen, and time again. Listen, baby, I know my track record isn't the best, but I'm trying, all right? You know what, tonight, I think I'm gonna go hang out with our uh, Spawn. You know, Dwayne, and um... Oh, wait, 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 baby, wait. Okay, but I'm gonna go with you, okay? Let's just stop and get a bite to eat before we go with Dwayne's, okay, honey? <laughs> hey, girl, you're so anxious. <laughs> You can go out with me and my boy. Yes. All right? We can go get something to buy and something to eat before we go. Okay. All right? Okay. And I promise this is more date nights to come. Okay, All right? baby. All right. I love you. I love you, too. This is going to be a good year, baby. Okay, baby. All right? Sarah, you betrayed me, too. You were supposed to be my wife until death do us part. Till death. Death. I, I'll kill both those men you've been messing with. Both of them and their families. One of them is a stinking cop, just like your dad. And never thought I was good enough for his precious little Sarah. Oh. Oh, I'm, I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm ready to die, and someone's gonna pay. Someone's gonna pay for this. <sighs> you kept me away from my daughter. The only thing I have to live for Oh, and oh, and, and now someone's gonna pay. Someone's gonna pay. I'm gonna kill somebody. I can do it because I'm the devil. I'm the devil. Someone's gonna die. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna take my Bible and my shotgun. I'm gonna have my music, and I'm gonna have some fun, and I'm gonna go out and reap a harvest of blood. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Uplifting. And that was a dramatization from the book Covered in Cap by Karen R. Johnson. And her story is an amazing story, amazing story. We have her on the line with us. She's live from California. And we're going to be talking to Karen in just a moment. But again, I always like to recognize my wonderful assistant here, Laura. Laura, hey, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are I, you? I'm doing great. It's always good to work with you. And uh, 
We're going to be talking with Karen. Karen, how are you today? I'm good, Rhonda. Thank you. Good, good. Welcome to the show. Karen, your story is amazing. I read your book, Covered in Cap. It's an awesome book, very well written. And your story really, to me, plays like a movie. It's amazing. But, you know, I want to go, we did do a dramatization, but I want to go more into your, uh, um, your telling us your story and where you want to start. So let's, let's talk about you and John and how you guys met. Okay. You know, I moved to the Sacramento area in 1992, mm -hmm. and of course you'd have to read the book to find out why I found myself here in Sacramento. But anyway, I was a, uh, a single mom at the time and an entrepreneur, and I was teaching various aerobic classes around town, and one day John and I, our paths crossed. And our first meeting, it was it was interesting because he was in his news van. He was a cameraman at that time for Fox 40 News, and there was an event, and I parked behind his van, and he told me I couldn't park there, and I laughed at him. And from there, Rhonda, I ran into John four times, well, a total of four times, but three times after that. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, Lord, is this is this a divine appointment? Is this is this? the man that you have for me. I was ready to settle down, and I was praying that the Lord would send me a husband. And uh, I was, I was uh, when I first met him, though, initially I was in a relationship, so I wasn't, I wasn't uh, interested per se, but after our, cross kept, our paths kept crossing mm -hmm. and my relationship had ended, I was trying to, to you know, to discern if it was God's will for us to be together. Okay. Okay. And so fast forwarding, you and John, you get married and do you have a perfect marriage? No, not at all. Okay. Sometimes I wonder if there is a perfect marriage out there. Mm -hmm. We know that most marriages take a lot of work. And one of the biggest questions I had, Rhonda, was how do we become one? Okay. I used to hear that all the time. And our pastor, when we got married, preached a powerful sermon called Bone of My Bone, Flesh of My mm -hmm. Flesh, mm -hmm. which we find that in the book of Genesis when Adam and Eve come together in the garden. But um, I found it that it was a very, very difficult. We were a blended family. John brought two children into the family. I brought one. Okay. And we had two pre-teenagers and one who was a teenager. And so we had our struggles in that area, and then we had other struggles as well. Okay. All righty. And let me ask you this. With the children being a blended family, did everybody mesh together, or was there any complications there as well? Well, there were complications. Our boys, John's son and my son, they were nine days apart, mm -hmm. same age, and they immediately bonded. They immediately got along. And of course, kids, they have their little confrontations from time to time, but mm -hmm. the boys were, were close. It was my stepdaughter who had a very difficult time. She was 14 when we met, and she was daddy's little girl. And just seeing daddy have another girl, which was not her, it was very difficult for her to embrace the fact that he was marrying and marrying me. So mm -hmm. that in itself brought a whole nother uh, dynamic to to the marriage. Okay. It helped her, her to understand the marriage covenant. Okay, so now let's go to that day that this uh, unfortunate event happened. What was that day like for you and John? Well, the day was supposed to begin with us going to church and having uh, family time together. Mm -hmm. However, the night before, it was a terrible, terrible downpour. It rained like crazy. He called me and told me instead of coming home, he was going to go back to the station. He was going to stay there, sleep, and then he would be on his way, and he would make it home in time enough for us to go to church together. Okay. My day began, Rhonda, with my phone ringing and him on the other end saying, why didn't you wake me up? I, you know, and I was like, and I was in a deep sleep, and he should have been home by that time because it was 9 a.m. He overslept, I overslept, and so it didn't begin the way we had planned. And, and as a matter of fact, the part of the skit that we did is right after he gets home uh, when you just made lunch and you're waiting for him to get in, and I think you mentioned that you hadn't seen him for about four days at that time, right? 
That is correct, yes. Okay. Because he was also working on a documentary, mm -hmm. and he was in and out of town.